What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the fan take. This is episode nine. This same crew as usual. I'm Cam. That's Tweety. And uh, we're recording this Wednesday night. So uh, we got the East play in going on right now. It's uh, currently halftime. Uh, Hawks at Bulls. Uh, Hawks at seven. Bulls 73. But um, just had a, a wonderful game that just uh, went off in the, with the East play in. Finna get into it. Uh, the Philadelphia 76ers versus the Miami Heat. Uh, the Sixers edged the Heat in a very close ball game, 105 to 104. And B led the 76ers with tw- 23 points, 15 rebounds, and five assists, followed by the unlikely hero, Nicholas Batum, 20 points, five rebounds, a block, uh, seven for 12 for the f- from the field, and six of 10 for three, Nicholas Batum. Um, Tyler Hero uh, had it going for the Heat, 25 points, uh, nine assists, but he was 9 for 27 from the field, uh, 4 for 14 from uh, three-point land. Um, Butler, he um, was having a good game, 19 points, five assists, four rebounds, uh, five steals. Uh, bad from the field, 5 for 18. Um, I know he he uh, got hurt. Uh, I want to say it was, either second, it was either second quarter, third quarter, but that hampered him for the rest of the game. It was just, it was just um, one of his legs. Um, yeah, just just going into the game. What's your immediate uh, takeaway from from the game tonight? Man, Batum balled out, man. You know, you don't usually see that from Batum. You know, he's one of those guys that are very quiet. But you know, six and ten from the three point line was amazing. I watched a great amount of that game. He hit like three on um, like in like five minutes. So like he had a great game. You know, Hero was doing his thing, but you know he was kind of chunking up shots. Um, Jimmy, he really wasn't present in this game. That would kill the Heat. And Joel Embiid is hurt. Like he's playing too timid. Like I seen like flashes. Like he got Hero on him, or he got um, you know smaller players on the other team, or he got Hami Hawkins on him. Like guys like that. Like especially young guy, young smaller guys. You got to take them to the rim. And he was like forcing the shot a lot. Like I don't. Joel doesn't seem like he's ready to play the New York Knicks. Man. Uh, yeah, and it, it felt like the whole game, both of the teams trying to get the game away. Um, the Heat controlled it for most of it. Um, for the uh, second and third quarter, um, Sixers kind of came back in, in the fourth, um, got their first lead. I want to say around six minutes. It was a well, their second lead that they uh led for a little while in the first, but the Heat had it going for pretty much uh the whole game. Uh, had a couple good leads, but. Um, both teams was really just trying to give it away. Obviously, um, the Heat was was hurt. Uh, no point intended from from Butler. Uh, Butler, as I said, um, uh, hurt one of his legs either in the second or third quarter, and um, it, it it played for the rest of the game. Um, Tyler Hero, he he tried to be the hero. Uh, I saw him chuck up, you know, a bunch of uh, three some contested at the end of the game. Uh, Batum came up with a with a um, good block. Uh, on Hero, Hero uh, came off the screen, tried to chuck up a three from the uh, right wing. Batum uh, sent it out, and uh, that basically, you know, uh, sealed the game for the Sixers. I, uh, also, uh, and B uh, passed out of a double team to um, uh, Kelly Oubre in the paint. He uh, put it up, got a, uh, um, and one. They put the Sixers up three, and it uh, basically uh, put the game away. Um, the Sixers will play the number two seed in Knicks on Saturday. What do you think uh, Sixers can do with the Knicks? Nothing. <laughs> um, I mean, I had the Knicks and the 7 6 meeting up in the conference finals originally, you know, when the Sixers were like a higher seed at the time. The Knicks, man, I don't know. They just, I mean, Brunson is like unstoppable. He's the Shea Gidge Alexander to the East. So you know, I don't, I don't believe nobody can stop him right now. And you, the thing about it is, though, Joel and B is timid. He's not taking no smaller players to the rim. And with Julius Randle out, man, he got a little more size on him in the inside. If Joel and B plays like he played tonight, he's gonna sell his team this series just like he did last year. We're going to the uh, the West play in the West play in Tuesday night first. Starting with the Pelicans versus the Los Angeles Lakers. The Los Angeles Lakers head off the um, New Orleans Pelicans, 110 to 106. Tuesday night, the play-in tournament to earn the seventh seed. 
LeBron led the way with a near triple double, 23 points, nine assists, nine rebounds, three steals, two blocks, six of 12 from the field, one for five from three point land, uh, 10 of 10 from uh, the foul line, 80 followed with 20 points, 15 rebounds, three blocks. D'Lo came with 21 points, six assists, seven of 14 from the field, five of 11 for the uh, three point line. Also, Reeves, 16 points, 6 assists. Uh, Rui Hachimura, 13 points, uh, 2 for 2 from the 3-point line. Zion, <laughs> the Pelicans was, was Zion in the, bag, in the bag of chips. Um, Zion came up with 40, 11 rebounds, 5 assists, um, 17 and 27 from the field, uh, 6 and 9 from the strike. Uh, the closest player to, to match uh, Zion points for the Pelicans was Trey Murphy the third. With all the 12 points from the bench. Um Ingram, he uh came back, minutes restriction, had you know a little bit of an injury towards the end of the season. Uh he came with 11 points, uh four for 12 from the from the field, four assists for rebounds. Um Zion left the game late in the fourth quarter due to injury. Uh, came out today, Wednesday, that he suffered a left hamstring injury that will end his season. Uh, the Lakers led the game for 18 points at one point. Uh, I know you watched the game. What was, what was some of your takeaways from um, the Lakers beating the Pelicans? I mean, I, I didn't like it, you know. But, you know, the Lakers, they got to run to the Nuggets. And I don't think the Lakers beat the Nuggets. I don't think anybody beat the Nuggets this, this whole, the rest of the year. None, not only, the Lakers might sweep the whole playoffs. Um, the Nuggets? The Pelicans. You said the Lakers. Oh, the, the well, not nah, the Nuggets, the Nuggets. Nuggets. <laughs> the Pelicans are they are um they're a skilled team, they're young, you know, with Zion, you no, know, he need help. Brandon Ingram, like Brandon Ingram and Zion, they both the same. Like they can't stay on the flow. And with one of them on the flow, one of them on the flow, one of them on the flow, one of them on the flow. And then you know, with restricted minutes in a game like this against LeBron James, and you the you like one of the main scorers on the team, you not being on the flow kind of hurts your team. Even though the Lakers, you know, they decent defensively, but like, bro, you have to be on the floor getting 25, you know, plus per game, helping Zion out. 40 points is bad, man, when nobody else can score 20. For sure. Um, yeah, it was it was kind of an ugly game to watch at times. Um uh obviously Zion had 40, but I, I think the Lakers as a team did pretty well with uh Zion. Um they you know, paper paint. They uh try to uh set up the charges. They got a few charges. Uh, Torian Prince, LeBron. They got a few charges on Zion. But um, I mean, if you watch the game, he was coming down the lane. Uh, two guys on him. Um, going through two or three people and still, you know, laying the ball up in traffic. Um, unstoppable. But because of that, you know, the other guys on the Pelicans. Uh, they missed a lot of you know open shots, and maybe they made a few more shots. The Pelicans uh, could have had some offense production, but it was Zion in the bag of chips. Zion came, he dropped forty, and nobody else on the Pelicans came with him. And uh, the Lakers, they they had quite a few bright spots at one point in the game. They was up eighteen, but they um, started slacking. Let the Pelicans come back into it. Was Zion leading the way? Um, it was good, good uh, production from AD. Double double, twenty points, fifteen rebounds, three blocks. I like D'Lo coming in. He got five threes. Rui was uh, a fish from three three pointer, three point land. He got uh, two was two or two. Uh, Reeves distributed sixteen. Um, Zion before he got hurt in in the fourth, he uh, made a layup and tied the game up. And then that's when you know he went to the bench. You know, he was walking around. He looked kind of mad or whatever. And then he uh, uh was it a towel or a chair or something that he threw yeah, and then he tight. went to the back and uh that was it for him. They were saying that it may have been a uh I seen it, I seen it. Yeah, I yeah, wanna yeah, say yeah. it's it like, like he stepped on the ground like very, very hard and his thigh kinda like moved like how KD Cal must have did. Like mm-hmm. his thigh kinda had like a motion inside of it. So like it, it it looked it like it looked it bad for for a dude his size like they heavy up top it looked it looked bad. Yeah, I mean that's been the problem his whole career is lower body injuries. You know he's so big he's going up and down, and this year he played you know seventy plus games and I'm sure you know it's frustrating. 
you play basically the whole regular season. You get into the play in, you, you drop forty points, and then you know in crunch time, your body gives gives out on you. And um, Willie Green at first last night he said that uh, it was just leg soreness, and now today they're saying it's, it's a hamstring. And um, Zion he, he's going to have to get the the, the weight together. Um, he he's he's been looking uh, pretty good. I know uh, during the end season tournament he kind of like he was a little big, and I feel like he he kind of uh, came down and waited a little bit over over the past few months. He he stayed on the court, but he he's going to have to get probably to high school weight if he's going to stay on the court. He can't be uh, two seventy plus. He's going to have to try to probably get to two fifty because he don't he don't need muscle. He's naturally strong. You know what I'm saying? So there's no point in you know still you know bulking up at this point in his career. He's he's going to have to slim down considerably because I mean there's no way you're you uh in a D tackle DM body and you're trying to play basketball. It's just it's just not gonna work. It's always gonna be uh lower by injuries to um come and um yeah with the Lakers uh with this win it's secured a seven seed they're gonna play the you know a second seeded Denver Nuggets this uh sun this Saturday uh who are the defending champs and it'll be a rematch from the West Conference Finals last year. Um just get into the series. I know you talked about it a little bit. What do you think about this first round series for the Nuggets versus the um Lakers? Four man, four oh, going home. No, it, it's always for the Lakers. They don't they don't have a chance to get the Nuggets. They just don't match up good, well, man. Murray's can Completely a bad matchup for D'Angelo Russell, and Murray's gonna put buckets on D'Angelo Russell. Michael Porter Jr. I mean, who guarding him? Who guarding Michael Porter Jr.? Then you got Aaron Gordon. You know, you got so many guys to worry about on that team. You got Braun coming off the bench, white dude, sniper. I mean, you got you got a lot to worry about, bro. You got Kyle Will Pope. You can't forget about Pope. You know, Pope last series hitting them up. You feel you can't, man. You can't count out the this Nuggets team. This Nuggets team is legendary, man. And Jokic, Jokic, like the, I don't, well, I can't, I ain't gonna call him the MVP. Lucas the MVP. Like, I'm not gonna call him. Say Luca. Lucas the MVP. I'm not gonna call Joel. I'm not gonna call Jokic the MVP. But, what about Shay? Yeah, I'm just being real, man. Shay, you no, know, he's my guy, but I, I keep it real, bro. Um, Jokic, you know, MVP, you know, in the race, enough top three. Still the best player in the league. Nobody, nobody playing better than him. Still the best player in the league. And you know, if Brian, you know, Brian gonna have to have, he gonna have to go back to that game six Boston days. You know, <laughs> too. He gonna need it. He need it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I'm definitely giving the niggas the edge. Uh. I think. I think. You know, won the championship last year. Uh. It's hard going back to back, but just you know, they've had the the Lakers number. For a very long time, the last time the Lakers beat the Nuggets was in December 2022, and that's a very long time ago. So, um, only chance I get the Lakers, AD is gonna have to show up. Uh, obviously, Brian is gonna show up. That's that's no question. Brian was gonna show up, but AD gonna have to show up. He can't give you just 20. He can't give you just 25. He's gonna come. He's gonna have to come out there and average 30 to 35 points, average 12 to 15 rebounds. Um, Rui has to show up. D'Lo has to show up. Austin Reeves has to show up. There's you can't be in all the games against the Nuggets. When we look at the, the West Coast Finals last year, every single game, uh, the Lakers was in it with the Nuggets until the fourth quarter. And then the fourth quarter, uh, Jokic make unbelievable shots. Murray make unbelievable shots. All the role players came and show up, but the Lakers didn't in the fourth quarters. So uh, it can it can be close. I, I give it six games. I don't think it's going to be a complete sweep. I give them a, a good chance. Um, they have a lot of time to prepare. It's not like the West, West Conference Finals where you're basically playing, you know, every day or every two days. It's the first round, so it's going to be more time for um, AD and, and LeBron to to get rest in between games, especially playing in the altitude of, of Denver. So, yeah, I, I, I still think Lakers got the edge, but uh, if if – the Lakers win. I don't. I don't think it should be a surprise by anybody. They said have two top seventy-five players. Um, they won a championship. Uh, what was it four years ago? It's, it's not. That's not that long ago. So, um, if if the Lakers can can 
uh, get all their players to show up. I said give them a, a good chance. Going into the second game, uh, Tuesday night, the Sacramento Kings took on the Golden State Warriors. Sacramento Kings blew out the Golden State Warriors 118 to 94 in the following game. Uh, Keegan Murray lit up the Kings. I mean, Keegan Murray lit it up for the Kings. 32 points, nine rebounds, 10, 20 for the field. Eight for 13 for three point land, followed by De'Aaron Fox, 24 points, six assists. Guard Ken Ellis was all over the place with 15 points, five assists, four rebounds, three steals, and three blocks. Um, three for four from three point line. Curry, he tried his best to hold together for the Warriors. Uh, he had 22 points, eight of 16 from the field, three of seven from three point line. The story of the game has to be Clay Thompson, uh, put up a donut, zero points. 0 10 from the field, 0 6 from three from three point line in uh, 32 minutes. And all the Golden State Warriors starters were uh minus and plus minus. Um, no, nope. it's not like to say no, hmm. Looney had Looney had plus one. I, I I just looked at it. Um, like I seen like a little box score thing. Looney had like plus one, he was the only one. Um, yeah, so it's not like to talk about with the game. Uh, Mostly is 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 Clay, and um, what what do you have to say about um, Clay's future? Get him out of here! They gone. It's no more Clay. You know, in the elimination game, you couldn't get a bump to the the foul. You couldn't try to euro step do a little layup i mean i see that's not clay bro that's not i'm saying though it ain't clay but bro you ain't making nothing like you gotta pull out some man paul george pull out some jane harden step do something like bro apparently what you came to do wasn't working for the first five shots then you took five more then you just (laughs) stopped shooting the ball like, why did you stop shooting the ball? The set one of you were considered the second best shooter of all time at one point, you no know, upcoming to be one, but you just deterred so much in the last two years, it doesn't make sense. Clay, who are you? You ain't that old, Clay. You ain't that old. Like, who yeah. are you? Like, you still should have a decent two years in you. You shouldn't be this horrible this year. The inconsistency of Clay Tussin has killed the Warriors. They could at least been a Seven, six seed this season, but it, it ain't been no Clay Thompson. And Draymond played decent, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, and that's and that's the thing about Clay. Usually, when we talk about you know guys being older, their production you no know, decreases because you know maybe their you know their prime was athleticism or uh, strength or you know things of that nature. He's always been a three point shooter, so you know it's weird for him to age and his three point. Uh, shooting efficiency, you know, goes down. And, you know, he's been having problems with this the uh, last two seasons, as you said, has been very alarming this season. Um, the Warriors didn't even make the playoffs, uh, made a play-in, uh, out the first round of the play-in. So, yeah, um, they, they might br- they might bring him back. Just, you know, he – last year before the, um, the season started, they offered him two years, forty-eight million or forty-five million. I want to say he turned that down because he felt like he can play for a better contract. Now that number is probably going to be two years, thirty, two years, twenty-five. So um, it's one of those Dennis Schroeder situations where you turn down an extension and and because uh, you think you can play it, play it out, and you know now you you probably don't even be on the NBA team next year. So. Man, I, I feel bad for him. Um, only kind of because you know I, I don't like the Warriors, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's it's hard to see um, a, a legend, a huge Hall of Fame player, go out in, in a fashion like this. I don't know how many teams in a league outside the Warriors will even be interested in, in bringing them in next year. Um, the math. They, hmm? The math. Nah, decent, I mean they. T- a, they got a, they got a backcourt with Luca and, and Kyrie, and then you know they might want to go younger. I don't know they want to bring. Yeah, you, you, uh, you might be right. You might be right. You might be right. May, might, may not want to bring uh, Clay in. Uh, maybe the Spurs. Maybe the Spurs. You know, just want yeah, a veteran yeah. presence. 
maybe a team like defender. You know, he he's a lengthy, he's a lengthy defender, three three and D guard. He lengthy. Yeah, right? but he, his he, his defense he, is going away too. De'Aaron Fox, Ken Ellis, uh, Keegan Murray, they you know running a uh, rampage on him um, last night. And you know, back in the day, back in his prime, he used to pick up on the other team's what? best guard. He used to pick up on Kyrie. He used to pick up on uh, Van Vliet and uh, Lowry and uh, the other guards they played, Chris Paul, um, other you know, guards of that star guards of that nature. But he can't even do that anymore. So uh, it's, it's tough. It's tough for Clay. Um, it's hard to see him. It's hard to see a, a guy go out like that. But maybe the Warriors give him another chance, give him a, a, a team friendly deal. Maybe a, a young team like the Spurs or the Pistons that need a veteran pick them up. But um, uh, the Kings will, will face the Pelicans Friday to determine the, the AC and who will face the Thunder in the first round. Next, we have to talk about Team USA. Um, the projected 2024 uh, 12-man roster for Team USA in the Summer Olympics has recently been announced. Headlining Stephen Curry, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Anthony Davis, Joel Embiid, Anthony Edwards, Tyrese Halliburton, Devin Booker, Jason Tatum, Drew Holiday, Bam Adebayo, and Kawhi Leonard. What do you think about uh, the roster that they are on um, for the 2024 Olympics? One of the best rosters they could have put together. I mean, to some of these guys, you wouldn't even know they not American. So, you know, Thing, you know, taking that into consideration, I mean, they probably picked the best 12 they can pick. And I think, you know, they just passed the jerseys out and everything. I just saw their little Instagram post. was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a special team, man. And, you know, just because they lost that last look preliminary, whatever that was. <laughs> hey, hey, we got Brun Brun now. You know, it's a little different. You know, I hate that you put KD third on this list because he's definitely the best player. But, um, I just put the people names on the list. I didn't do it in order. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Great team, man. I mean, I think it probably could have used a little more size. I'm seeing here we got out of bio. I mean, yeah, we could have used I mean, that's why we got to L and B because I mean we don't have I mean, yeah, we got, we got a B and Davis too. Yeah, I forgot about him B. He flip flopped on, you know, he 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 <laughs> had to do all that, bro. But we we ain't trying to build up the, the Metro team to go fight Drake now, bro. Like we ain't trying to do that. We made, we, we, come on, bro. We, we bro, made, I, like bro, if we did, come on, bro. If we'd have had him B, we only would have had uh, two bigs. Out of bio mm -hmm. and uh, AD. I don't want to name another big because I know I'm going to name a foreign guy that I don't know foreign. Is that? Because, so, <laughs> I mean, uh, last year we was trying to put uh, Ben Kiro at the five with uh, in FIBA. We was trying to put Ben Kiro at the five. We'll, we had Bobby Portis at the five, and they're not going to compete with <laughs> – they're not going to compete with international big, so um, I love Wait, Jerry what? Jackson. But hmm. Ben Chiro, Ben Chiro probably can compete. Can compete. He's a Bobby Porter's can't in, compete. In, 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 in international play, it's it's a lot about those bigs. And Ben Chiro, Bobby Porter's, uh, Jerry Jackson, I love you. Nah, but nah. They wasn't, they wasn't messing with those international bigs. Uh, Walker Kessler, he's another young guy, but he doesn't even – well, he does start for the Jazz. He's a but. baller. He's a baller, bro. You, you're not going to count out Kessler. Kessler's a baller. I, I see it now on this new list. Hmm? <laughs> He's no, no, he no, not no, on this new list. I mean, only guys that's returning from FIBA is uh, Halliburton or Anthony Edwards. He did very great in FIBA last year. Um, a lot of people talk about Jalen Brunson and, and Kyrie being snug, but I don't really think Kyrie. Kyrie is a screen, bro. He, he can play for 10 USA. He played for 10 I mean, USA. Yeah, I, I heard that too, but like, he played for our screen, bro. You know, like, we're we not trying to do that, bro. Like, let the, if they from other country, let them play with their country, bro. Like, why we even pick up MB? Like, why? Let them play with their countries. We need MB, bro. <laughs> we don't need nobody. We have LeBron James. Why do you keep forgetting it? Is LeBron going to play the five? I don't want LeBron playing the five against. Hey, against. hey, but, but, hey, get what he can, though. It's LeBron. I mean, he can. He can, but we got KD. He's seven foot. We can stick him down there. You don't understand the national basketball. You don't understand Kevin Durant, man. You don't understand Kevin Durant, man. If you put if you put KD at the five, it's just like putting uh Jaron Jackson at the five. Nah. 
And Jerry Jackson fouled too much. So, I mean, that was a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was a problem of uh, uh, last year with um with FIBA. It was just we had bigs, but they couldn't mess with the international bigs. Uh, Jerry Jackson, he fouled too much. Uh, Walker Kessler, he doesn't have enough bricks in his back pocket. Um, Bobby Porter, he's a bit slow. Um, Ben Carroll, he's a bit more undersized compared Where's to the other people. Where's Kessler, beings. though, bro? What, what Kessler do? Like, Kessler, he ball. He was decent. He better ain't got minutes. They were beating up on JJJ the whole time. Talk about your guy. The dude you I did talk talking about my guy. Say he the dude you be talking about. He found too much in the league. <laughs> That's all we got. It's Big Steven Adams. Who who you think gonna start before we move on? Who you think uh what will be your starting five? Starting no still the show. Can't need to put that guy on the bench. Um got Brian at Trey. Um AD at the four. B at the five. Damn, I'm on this too. Um give me um if they want to go big, they put Tatum at the two. They want to go like the actual two. They put Booker at the two. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I'll I'll probably put um LeBron at guard. Um, big big guard play is is a big part of um international basketball. I think that's why they added Drew Holiday. He's a six four point guard. Um, they can play defense and 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 that's big and in, in international ball. You want to have big guards. Uh, we got shooting Curry. Uh, shoot KD, uh, Halliburton, Anthony Edwards, Booker. So we got shooting, we got the size, we got the defense. I think it's a very well rounded uh, roster. Going to our next topic, Jonte Porter. Uh, recently, in, in uh, a few episodes ago, we got to Jonte Porter uh, being under investigated for uh, gambling and NBA recently announced that Toronto Raptors forward John T. Porter has been issued a lifetime ban from the NBA due to violating their rules on gambling. In their investigation, they found that Porter revealed information about his own health to a known sports better ahead of the March 20th game against Sacramento Kings. Another better privy to the information placed an 80,000 same game parlay bid that feature unders on Porter statistics and will win $1.1 million. We played three minutes before leaving the game with the illness. The payout for the bid was not paid. The league investigation also revealed Porter placed at least 13 bets on NBA games using an associate's online betting account. The bets ranged from $15 to $22,000, totaling $54,094, according to the league. Then Bay said that the total payout from these bets was $76,059 with net winnings of $21,965. One parlay that was made by Porter, which was the most alarming to the league and the investigation, was one where he betted the Raptors to lose, which further pushed the NBA to the decision that they made. What do you think about this whole situation? <sighs> Bro, your money, I mean, hey, 1.1, hey, make your cut, bro. I, I, your, contract is worth, <laughs> your contract is worth more than that, bro. Why are yeah. you trying to, why are you, like, bet your whole contract then, bro? Like, why are you betting petty, bro? What is your problem? You betting petty money, bro. You could have bet that on the NFL game. could have told one of the NFL guys to do something. Like, why? Why? Man, with games you're playing in, like, you're perfectly tanking the games, bro. Like, why are you perfectly tanking the games? Uh, Jante Porter, I mean, he's one of those guys. I mean, he's not a, a X factor. I don't even, like, I'm not even going to say nothing about it. I don't even know the average. But I know he's not an X factor. He's not an all star. He's not even close to being an all star. He's probably not even a solid role player. So why too, you, he, he plays in the G League, too. Why are you betting on yours? Well, you probably need the money, bro. I ain't you probably need the money. Yeah. My my bad, bro. You you did right. You probably need the cash, bro. Yeah, I mean it's it's a crazy situation. Um, I mean I don't I don't know uh, what the contract is, but if he's a two way player, he's at least breaking 
a million as far as his contract, at least. So um, I don't know. And then you're only making a net winning of twenty one thousand. You know, as an NBA player, it it just wasn't worth the risk. Uh, I'm sure he probably got away with it a few times, and he probably just, you know, got addicted to it. Say, what? Well, shoot, man, that's. Five thousand dollars. Well, if you know, I do that. You know, ten thousand. Okay, I tell him. You know, he he might win a million off of that. So you are gonna break me off some of that. So, you know, it's probably just uh, won a couple times and it just got out of control. Um, and I mean, obviously, if somebody was to win, you know, one point one million dollar bet off of you know some lucky LeBron pick or some lucky KD pick or something, it's it's not gonna be a surprise. But, uh. uh Draft teams looking like, why does random role player, G League player on the Raptors getting $1.1 million parlay, you know, $50,000 parlay, and then it's, you know, back to back, back to back, back to back. So they had to, you know, pick up on it, they had it to the league, like, hey, it's this uh, G League player on the Raptors that's like our number one money maker for the last two weeks. Y'all need to look into this. And, um, yeah, one of the game he had a uh, the parlay won one point one million. DraftKings was gonna pay that. <laughs> DraftKings was gonna pay that for no Jonte Porter uh, parlay. So yeah, um, it's it's sad to see some a, a young player uh, mess their career up like that. So um, I don't, I don't know what's next for him. Obviously, his brother Mike Porter Jr. plays for the Nuggets, so I'm sure Porter uh, Jonte Porter is, is set for life. Uh, he's probably going to have to find a, a, a league uh, outside the country to, to play for. And, yeah, it's, it's, it's a sad situation, but, you know, NBA, they, they put the hammer down on him, and they definitely going to make him an example for anybody else that, that wants to try to do the same thing. Got a fun topic. Um, LeBron James on a recent episode of The Shop. Uh, LeBron was asked if there was an award he hasn't won that still stings. Brian said, yeah, deepest player of the year. There's the only award I don't have in my house. That kind of stings. It don't make sense. The year I finished second in defensive in the defensive player of the year award, the guy who won, Marcus Hall, defensive player of the year, didn't even make the first team all defense. How is that possible? Uh, what do you think about LeBron uh, saying this and, and what do you think about uh, how he feels about being snubbed for defensive player of the year? Oh, yeah, they were, bro, they were the defense player of the year. I mean, I, it kind of hurt me. I mean, you've done everything else except be defensive player of the year, and you deserve defensive player of the year, and you was on first team all defense, and he wasn't even all defense. Like, that's kind of crazy. Yeah, he was second team all defense. Yeah. He was second team all defense, but he's not first team all defense. How right. are you the defense player of the year and not first team all defense? <laughs> right. He shouldn't have even been in the top five. The top five should be the like, come on, bro. Like <laughs> there's some Jonte Porter stuff going on right there with that man. But, um yeah, I mean, you know, he just got snub. Not really it, it don't hurt as bad. It should be, you know, he got a lot of trophies in his room, but you know, that's a unique looking trophy that he'll never get. Yeah. Um yeah, I mean it's 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 the voters playing with with his um, legacy. Obviously, if LeBron was to win a defensive player of the year that season, he would have been at the time the third player to do it. Hakeem won MVP and defensive player of the year in the same season. Obviously, Michael Jordan uh, did the same thing, and you know at the time he he was you know creeping up on on, on Jordan legacy. He had 2013. That was his fourth MVP. Uh, he had two championships. He would have had uh, two finals MVPs. Already been to, was it four or five finals at the time? So you know he was creeping up on 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 Jordan and the the media. They don't like that. They don't they don't like uh, players you know creeping up on on uh, other you know legendary players. Obviously with Jokic, Jokic had the opportunity to be a, a three time. MVP three consecutive years, but they gave it to him B because they didn't want to mess with you know other guys that, that have done it. They said, you know, if Jokic is a three time MVP, he did it three consecutive years, you're gonna have to put him in a different type of light. And they not ready to they wasn't ready to do that, so they gave it to him B. 
Um, LeBron has been stuck for MVP uh, quite a few times. Obviously, he could have won it the year Derrick Rose won it. He could have won it the year um, Harden won it. He could have won it the year um, yes. uh, Giannis, the second MVP. Um, he could have been. Yeah, oh, uh, that, that sounds kind of crazy, bro. Yes, you don't remember Giannis' second MVP, the, the, the bubble year. I'm saying though, LeBron could have won it that year. Yes. Yeah, you gotta look. You gotta look at the stats. Yeah, I gotta look that up. Yeah, that's. Right. And then, and then you gotta think about that year. Um, that was, uh, the year that LeBron, um, in the Lakers, were the number one seed. Yeah, that was the year that LeBron won the MVP. Yeah, that was the year that LeBron won the MVP. Yeah, that was the year that LeBron won the MVP. Yeah, that was the year that LeBron won the MVP. Yeah, that was the year that LeBron won the MVP. Yeah, that was the year that LeBron won the MVP. Yeah, that was the year that LeBron won the MVP. Yeah, that was the year that LeBron won the MVP. Yeah, that was the year that LeBron won the MVP. Yeah, that was the year that LeBron won the MVP. Yeah, that was the year that LeBron won the MVP. Yeah, that was the year that LeBron won the MVP. Yeah, that was the year that LeBron won the MVP. Yeah, that was the year that LeBron won the MVP. Yeah, that was the year that LeBron won the MVP. Yeah, that was the year that LeBron won the MVP. Yeah, that was the year that LeBron won the MVP. Yeah, that was the year that LeBron won the MVP. Yeah, that was the year that LeBron won the MVP. Yeah, that was the year that LeBron won the MVP. Yeah, that was the year that LeBron won the MVP. Yeah, that was the year that LeBron won the MVP. Yeah, I got to look into it. I got to look into it. But, um, yeah, and then in 2015, uh, the finals, even though he was on a losing team, he could have been finals MVP. <laughs> and he would have won finals MVP the year, uh, that year. He would have been the second player to do it besides Jerry West. Jerry West is the only player that's, that's won finals MVP on a losing team. So, it, but he can do it. Of, yeah, Jerry West I won it. That means yeah, Jerry, was to be, yeah, okay, it's crazy. And he and he almost won it. He was, you know, second and voted. He had beat Curry for finals MVP. Uh, in the it was uh, first place was in Iguodala, of course. Then it was LeBron. Then it was Curry. So he I out beat. Though, bro. I don't know, bro. <laughs> I don't know. Um, crazy. But yeah, I mean, it's been quite a few times LeBron's been snub, you know, by the media and voting. Because you know, if if he would have had five MVPs out of all the years that he's you know the second place for MVP, he would have been tied for the same amount of MVPs that Jordan has. So uh, yeah, I don't like it. They 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 messing with with people's um, careers and legacies to try to you know uphold you know all these players from the eighties and nineties, and you know there's no no disrespect to them, but. I feel like you just can't play with, with history like that, me personally. Yeah, a little football talk on this episode um, regarding Bill Belichick. Um, Warren Sharp reported that Patriots owner Robert Kraft called Arthur Blank, the owner of the um, um, Falcons, to warn him not to trust Bill Belichick. Kraft was a big part of why the Falcons passed on hiring Belichick. Kraft found Bill to be extremely difficult and obstinate and kind of stubborn and in the end not worthy of his trust and also very very arrogant all close from Warren Sharp. What do you think about these reports? Man, that's crazy, you know. Cop blocking dude on a job, right? It's crazy. Right? <laughs> why, why you gotta do all that, bro? Let that man get his yeah. job. No, um, that's a you know he's a great coach, and for him not to be hired. Everybody knew it had to be something, and like now everybody's saying like, okay, it was something. Like, so how many, how many play, how many people did he tell it? Like, you know, how many mm-hmm. people did they spread to? You know, how many people did he persuade not to get a good coach just because he's hard to deal with? He does seem hard to deal with. I might just be talking sure. about because I don't know him, but like at times, you know, I mean, he had an argument with you know the greatest player of all time, you know, so. You know, well, the greatest quarterback. You know, they had they had they had their differences, and you know, when you got a player that great, you usually don't have that many differences between the player and the coach. And y'all had a dynasty, and y'all had differences. So, like, I don't know. I, I just he might not be too easy to deal with. He's a good coach, though. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, this is pretty shocking to me. I I didn't, I didn't know Robert Kraft got down like that. Uh, honestly, I don't really know this is true. <laughs> Obviously, um, Warren Sharp is, is the only person that uh, reported this. Um, so I mean, it's, it's, if if it's reported, it's it's definitely some truth behind it because journalists usually don't lie. It's usually coming from someplace, somewhere, somebody. So um, yeah, if, if Robert Kraft did that, that's that's pretty crazy. Um, you would think Belichick would have been you know hired by by, by somebody. Um, obviously, the Falcons would seem to be the closest per- closest uh, team. Then they hired uh, Raheem Morris, um, also deserving. Um, 
the the Chargers they picked up uh, Jim Harbaugh. Um, Dallas they kept um, M- McCarthy. Um, so I mean, I don't know. Um, he's he's still he's still keeping himself busy. I saw he went to uh, uh, Washington, uh, Washington Huskies uh, uh, college. He uh, did some work with them. He went to uh, Nebraska and, and did some work with, with Matt Rule. So he he's still been been keeping himself busy. Uh, um, he's still definitely interested in, in coaching. Uh, another thing, with Bill 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 Belichick is still interested in coaching. Um, however, the Philadelphia Eagles, the Dallas Cowboys, and the New York Giants seem to be the main teams he's uh, considering if the jobs open. The Eagles seems to be the closest, but they're hesitant to fire Nick Sirianni. The Cowboys decided not to fire Mike McCarthy, as I said, but Belichick and the Jones family have a known good relationship. Uh, the Giants are a distant third team in the mix, but he did start his coaching career there as defense coordinator, uh, won two Super Bowls as defense coordinator. Uh, he may want to end his career with the New York Giants. So what do you think would be a good place for um, Bill to, to go off to the sunset? What time? <laughs> He's already, he's already in the sunset, bro. He's gone. Like you can't, we can't stop bringing these, man, bro. When people, when it's time for people to go, you gotta realize when it's time for people to go. Clay Thompson, Bill Belichick, Tom Brady, and one more year, LeBron James. Um, I ain't finna keep names that many people. Chris Paul. Let me let me go and throw him in there. When it's time for you to go, it's time for you to go, man. You, you just gotta, you know, you, you're getting older, you know. He may be like when he he's that old, people don't want to deal with a guy. Like, you know, he probably has one of grumpy old attitudes, you know. <laughs> and, you know, he, he might be getting lied on. He might be a great guy. Let, yeah. let, let me stop saying that. He might be a great guy. So let me stop putting it on his name. But you know, as words were said. And it got to be some evidence to it. I mean, you're still not going to hire a guy. Okay, I just walk up to you. I just tell you, oh, don't hire that guy because he acts like this. And you don't even know that guy that much. So it has to be some truth to it, you know. And those guys have to put that in mind. Like, okay, he's a great coach, but I've seen flashes of this too. Like, why we were playing against him, I'm not going to hire him. Um, yeah, I mean, he definitely, you know, has the history of being a – um, you know, a, a strong, will-minded um, individual. We don't say much in the media. We do say, talk to the media. He got a, a, a attitude. So, I mean, uh, if he's hard to deal with and, and the league, like he's hard to deal with, and they don't want to mess with him no more, then, you know, the league will retire you sometimes. Uh, it would be interesting to see if, if the Eagles uh, fire Nick Sirianni, if the, if the Eagles have another this point of season. I don't think the Cowboys going to get uh, Bill Belichick because, you know, if you bring Belichick in and the Cowboys magically end up in NFC Championship or Super Bowl, Bill Belichick is going to get the credit. And Jerry Jones, he he wants all the credit. Um, mm-hmm. Giants, I don't, I don't see him going to the Giants. Uh, maybe he go to the Giants as like a consultant or something. Um I just don't see him want to be the, the head coach of the Giants. Maybe he just, you know, go there and be part of the um, front office. Um, Giants are rebuilding. I don't think they're going nowhere anytime soon. So, hey, it would be interesting seeing what the what the future holds for um, Bill Belichick. Blake Griffin. Um, Blake Griffin, former superstar power forward Blake Griffin, recently announced his retirement. Griffin was 2009 first overall draft pick. He played 14 seasons in NBA and played for four different teams, including the Clippers, Pistons, the Nets, and the Celtics. He was a six-time All-Star, three-time All-NBA second team, two-time All-NBA third team, 2011 All-Rookie first team, and the 2011 Rookie of the Year. He was also the 2011 NBA dunk champion, where he had his infamous dunk over the Kia, and he was a cover star of NCAA Basketball 10, and NBA 2K13 video games. What do you think about um, Blake Griffin uh, hanging his his sneakers up? I mean, pretty, you know, pretty, you no, know, kind of short, kind of decent career. I mean, decent career for you know a guy like him. I mean, he's, he's 
Uh, uh, Hall of Fame is a toss up. Um, he's gonna got that jury, but he, he played a decent season. I mean, he he just yeah he he hadn't been the same in four or five years. Like he he just like he could still like jump a little bit. I remember he had surprise on the Knicks. He surprised everybody <laughs> jumping over everybody. No, yeah, he jumped on Giannis. Remember. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty exciting to me. I was watching this series, man. I, I was loving every minute of it. But you know, he's just, <laughs> he's just not that no more. And I mean, he's retiring at a great point. I mean, he, he, he was still playing a little bit. You know, he was kind of in and out the league for a little bit. But he was always on the team. You know, he just was getting solid minutes. So I believe he just one of those guys. He knew it was like it's time to go. And your teammate Chris Paul, I gotta say it three times. <laughs> time to go. You know, that's all I gotta say about that. Yeah, and we'll we'll talk about Chris Paul in a minute, but um, yeah, I mean, a great career. Uh, he was very great in college. Uh, with Oklahoma, first overall draft pick, crazy athleticism. I mean, just you know, jumping out the gym his his whole career. Um, uh, he got got that, that special. Um, uh, well, he got quite a few special dunks, but I, I uh think about when uh. Jamal Crawford put the like that loop where he put it in between his legs and threw it up and Blake Griffin did the uh windmill. Uh that's that's one of my uh favorites of his career. Um I remember he had uh a game winning three pointer where he told um where he faked the ball to Chris Paul, kept it and, and shot a three to win a game. I remember that. Uh, obviously you uh mentioned the dunk he had on Giannis while he was on the net, so yeah, he's he's always been a, a leaper, always been you know entertaining. Part of that, you know, a, a very fun. Um, Live City Clippers during the twenty tens. Um, yeah, I mean, just just special. Um, all fun fun to play with on on two K for sure. Six time All Star. I mean, he he got all the accolades. Um, he definitely should be on on. I think he's gonna be a Hall of Famer. Just because you know entertainment value, he got the the all stars, he got the all NBAs, um, and then you know with 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 the Hall of Fame, it 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 has the NBA and college. And he was an amazing college player because he won the uh, the Wooten, he won the uh, the Naismith, he was Player of the Year. So you know, adding that with his NBA career, he definitely uh, probably going to be first or second ballot. Uh, Hall of Fame at, at at some point, so um yeah, and then mentioning his his teammate Chris Paul um had a, a fairly disappointing season, I guess you would say, with the um, Golden State Warriors coming off the bench, under studying for uh, Steph Curry. Uh, the the I want to say the Warriors have a team option on him actually, so I think it's the Warriors' choice whether or not they keep him. So what do you think the Warriors should do? Is, is, Regarding uh, Chris Paul, Chris Paul is gone. Like <laughs> Chris Paul, Clay. There's a couple more guys I probably throw in there. They gotta go. You gotta you gotta get some draft picks while you can. Like you probably can get like a a a, a second rounder or something for Clay right now. Like two two three second rounders. Like get something. At least try to get you a late first round or something. Like get something, bro. Like you can't just let him sit on the roster and stink up like stink up the field goal percentage, bro. He's and not then, a brother no more. And then you know the Warriors in the in the tax. You know what I'm saying? They right. illustrate the tax and they um you know got one of the if not the highest payrolls in the association. So, you know, to I think uh you get getting rid of, of Chris Paul and Clay Thompson while you in the tax. And miss the playoffs. <laughs> you can miss the playoffs in the tax with them too. You can miss the playoffs without them too. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's very interesting to see what they'll do with Clay. Um, I'll, they might not keep Chris Paul, but it's very interesting what they'll do with Clay because I don't really know how many teams are, are interested in Clay. Warriors may be the only team in the league interested with with Clay, and you know they may. What, two year, thirty, two year, twenty five. Yeah, I, I think the Pistons could use them. You know. Yeah, I mean, I think the Pistons could use anything. I think, I think the Pistons could use a massage chair. Uh, <laughs> Come on, bro! I like. 
I think the Pistons could use. It. I mean, I like the Pistons too. They got Money Williams. I love Money Williams. I think he got a bad break with the Suns, but he got you know the big contract with with Detroit. Um, they got a, a Thompson twin. They got yeah, uh, K Cunningham. K Cunningham for ball. Um, what, what's the what's the I, name? Ivy. Yeah, I you know what I'm saying? Uh, Ivy. Um, what's the other kid name? Uh, Ivy Stewart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they got they got. They got uh, a lot of a lot of Stewart, bro. Stewart, Stewart is a baller, bro. Stewart, um, Durant. Is that the name Durant? That, that's the one. Yeah, Durant. Oh, uh, Jalen yeah, Durant. Yeah, I just I just I think about David Henry when I think of uh, uh Isaiah Stewart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, uh, yeah. I mean, the, the piss is cool. They definitely need some vets if, if they want to bring Clay on. They'll they'll be cool with me, uh, but yeah, it's very interesting to see where that situation is going to go. Yeah, and an update on on the game. Currently, the Bulls are up one fourteen to ninety six on the Hawks. So, um, Dejounte Murray leading the way for the Hawks with twenty eight. Um, Trey Young got seventeen. I know he got something wrong with his hand. Um, the Bull, Kobe White got thirty two for the Bulls. Yeah, that, that's that's. Like normal, like it's Kobe White, most improved player. Sid Rosen got 22, Fusevich got 20 and 9. Levine yeah. played? Where is Levine? No, Levine DMP. I guess he hurt or something. Well, that Levine is criminal. Is he hurt? I haven't heard, I haven't heard nobody say he was hurt. Okay, he had season in the surgery on his foot. Oh wow, he he had to play since January. I did not know that. All right, that's why I give him not watching the Bulls. Well, yeah, he he uh got season in the surgery on his foot. So yeah, um, it's looking like as, at the time of this record, it looks like the, the Bulls are, are taking it home against the Hawks. But uh, being interested to see uh, how that game goes. Obviously, if the if the uh, Bulls win, they'll be taking on. The heat, yeah, they'll be taking on the heat for the eighth seed, and uh, the Hawks will be going home. So, <laughs> <laughs> interesting to see uh, how that game is going to go. But for this episode, that's it. Episode nine, Cam Tweety. We'll see you next time. Okay, see, I'm in the thunder. I be feeling like I'm chick. You switch up like KD Draymond. Don't give me a tick. Double team, bitch, and your bitch. Hooping like I'm on the net. Working hard, can't get no rest. I wrapped it right off my chest.